Let's do it live, Jack. You are looking live. Welcome back to the Colin Thompson Show. I appreciate everybody tuning in. It has been a couple of weeks since we have done a show, which has been crazy for me to say because we've been doing shows here for years now. I haven't missed a week. But before we get into all those details, Jack, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, you know, busy as usual. School's back in session, unfortunately. So one more semester left if everything goes to plan. Then we're finally done with all of that. We put that behind us and take the next step forward of life. A little sentimental this morning. Feel wow. I was not <laughs> sentimental at all when I finished college. I uh, yeah, I remember those days and I I you know it's funny this morning we were running to, we were going to run an urn and there was a crew, there was a bus stop. And there was just kids sprinting towards the school bus. And I just started getting anxiety. I'm like, oh, man, I did not miss those days. Like when someone says homework, oh, my goodness, I absolutely hated it. So, Jack, congrats on getting a piece of paper that you'll never even look at again unless you hang it up in your <laughs> office. So, good job. You have checked the box uh, in our world today. So, again, I appreciate everybody tuning in to the Collins Thompson Show. Everything we do here is brought to you by the original Fudge Kitchen, shipping fudge and sweet treats across the country. It is the perfect time now to start planning for Valentine's Day coming up next month, but also the birthdays throughout the back end of this holiday season now that we're into the new year. You cannot beat it. Fudge and sweet treats across the country. Hooked up the entire staff, family, friends, everybody in Carolina with sweet fudge and treats. And I was just getting texts back like crazy. My wife loved the fudge, brought back good memories of the Jersey Shore. So, hey, if you can't get to the Jersey Shore, it's a great way to bring it to somebody because everybody's got a story how they got the kind of Jersey Shore fudge or the staples of the Jersey Shore and saltwater taffy. So, again, big thanks to our friends at the original Fudge Kitchen, shipping fudge and sweet treats across the country, fudgekitchens.com. So, yeah, we haven't done a show in a couple of weeks. About to explain why. I, I've done shows, but – I just can't really get through them. I'll be honest with you. I've done them, but I don't think they're either up to snuff, A, or I'm mentally in the right place to do a show. Um, it's been a crazy finish of the season. One, us in Carolina, we're, we were on a playoff run, uh, and we got knocked out the last – we lost to Tampa on the road. Great game, tough game, and uh, just was a roller coaster ride. Uh, I've been on the practice squad all year, just to be to clear. I really don't talk about it too much on the show. I try not to talk about us in Carolina too much. Been on the practice squad all year. I had to, a calf kind of thing I was dealing with until about week eight and kind of pushed through it the rest of the year. So it was a weird a year for me. Really haven't missed any time in practice since 2013. So that was really unique for me and, and a, another mental, it, you know, whole nother can of worms and just playing. It was harder than playing, just being honest. Playing, you get in the groove, you're getting your rehab, you're, you're playing, you know, 20, 30 snaps a game like I was playing over the last couple of years. And then all of a sudden you're hurt. It's like, whoa, you're on a different schedule. You're not around the team as much. You're by yourself at practice. So uh, that was, you know, one of the struggles this year. But it was a freaking fun year with a lot of chains. Obviously, right, Coach Rule, Christian McCaffrey, Baker Mayfield all gone. And a lot of uniqueness uh, to the season, for lack of a better term. Um, and Coach Wilkes was just unbelievable. Just I really don't have enough nice things to say about the guy. The guy, he's just so professional. He just walks softly, carries a big stick. He is dialed in. He was just a pleasure, pleasure to play for. I absolutely loved it. So the whole staff this year was a blast. Even obviously Coach Rule and I of this show knows that him and I are close and spent time together at Temple and obviously two to two and a half years at Carolina. Um, so that was one reason why we were in a playoff push and a lot going on with there, getting ready for the playoffs. Obviously didn't happen, and that's a bummer because we have a great group of guys and a great team in Carolina. Uh, and you guys saw it when we started clicking and turning around. We, we had some big wins down the stretch. So that was one. Two, one of my best friends and, you know, my uncle, Chris Boyle, passed away. I talked about him on the show, the last show that got published here. And him and I are very, very close. And we went to uh, to his funeral in the middle of the season. The Panthers were nice enough to send flowers, allow me to take a personal day and go up there on a Wednesday. Um our biggest work day of the week as a practice squad tight end first class organization for allowing me to do that. Unbelievable coach Wilkes and everybody and them sending flowers and donations. This, I can't thank him enough. Uh, so went up there to that and that was in the middle of the week. It kind of was in limbo. It was an emotional rest of the week. I was playing catch up the rest of the week for not being there. So we didn't do the show. I really wasn't in the right head place either. Uh, that was right before, you know, right after the holiday, right after Christmas there. And honestly what happened with DeMar Hamlin I'll go back to Chris real quick. Chris, we love you. We miss you. I think about you every day, buddy. You'll be missed. 
Tamar Hamlin situation, obviously. I we, Jack and I did the show last week. I don't even know what to say because there's a million layers to this. Obviously, his, his him and his family are in our thoughts and prayers. That's that that goes without saying. Let's just say that first. From a player's perspective, it's absolutely devastating. From a human perspective, it's devastating. Someone almost dies at their job. That's scary. Scary shit. So on a personal perspective, that was really hard for me because, you know, just being point blank period, my wife and I are talking about it. She's like, I can't imagine if that's you, right? My family and I are talking about it. And then it's just a lot. And I didn't really know how to articulate it. And I didn't feel comfortable doing it on a show. So I think the really, it's a shame, but the positive that has come out of it, again, now with the media side of things and the human side of things, is our world has come together. People are raising money. People are maybe not worried about their fantasy football team as much. People are focused on the the human aspect of what we do. We are not robots. I know it's hard to believe. And some fans and a lot of fans I interact with truly think we are that. And that's okay. That pays our bills. That's a part of why we have a show, a following. It's awesome. Um, but I think it was really good for the human element perspective to say like, wow, these people have parents. These people have wives, girlfriends, significant others. We dedicated our lives to this profession and we've been blessed to make it. Whether you make it for a day or six years, it's unbelievable profession. And we know what we signed up for. I just think that on the side note of the fact that he's healthy and he's on his way or healthy to get out of the hospital, healthy enough to get out of the hospital, and he's on his way to recovery. He's unbelievable. There's only a few places on the earth that you want to be if you're, something like that happens. And one is obviously a hospital or near one. And two is probably a football field because we have expansive, expansive medical teams, expansive procedures. So uh, everyone did their job, which is at the end of the day what it's all about. The medical staff, everybody. Um, I thought, you know, the NFL did an amazing job of trying to make this thing work. You're seeing some things, though, now from a business perspective. He doesn't have his pension. He doesn't have three credited seasons. Neither do I. I played six, seven. I'm going on seven years now. I've only played two credited seasons. You need three active games for three seasons. That's it. Really hard to do. So he's got two seasons, I believe. So for him, he doesn't have his pension. He doesn't have healthcare for five years he doesn't have and the more you play right the more that covers he doesn't have let's see his 401k the first year they put a couple grand in i think the next year they match it so assuming that he's putting his money in his 401k which i'm assuming he is there's good veterans with the bills i'm sure he told they told him too he's got i don't know maybe fifty thousand in his 401k so this league is unbelievable folks but just know this it's a business And I think the Bills, I know the Bills will, and I know the NFL will do right by them. So that's why, for me, there's all these loaded things. There's personal stuff. There's my family, my health, right, selfishly. You start thinking about yourself, right? Immediately that happens. What if that was me? Who that would affect? Um, And just thinking about Damar and his family during those situations. I try not to watch the video. I try not even think about it. I'm not ready. I've had a lot. It's been an emotional year as it is. I'm not ready to really dive into that. So maybe over this break here, I'll dive into it a little bit more on a personal level because just we don't really think about that. It's not going to happen to me, right? I don't play. I, I'm, I'll be okay. I play safe. I do this. Well, so does DeMar, right? So is T. Higgins. It's ridiculous that people were giving him some smack, but that's a different story. So Essentially, that's why we have not had a show, guys. And we don't need to clip any of this stuff, Jack, but, you know, for social media, unless there's something, you know, in there that you deem, uh, and I trust you, uh, you deem that's going to be good for us. But this is just me on a personal level talking to you guys. And then the other note, really, and I was like, ah, should I tell the fans? But, I'm, you know, as of now, we I don't know what's going on in Carolina with, with the future, right? So we don't know on me on a personal level. I don't know what's going on with what the team level, right? So it's it's a lot of things in limbo in this business. And again, that goes back to the DeMar situation. Like this is, this is our job. I pay taxes. I try to make this money last my entire life. It's only a short-lived thing. Um, so it's a um it's a complicated issue with this with this 
Damar, you know, obviously situation and him and his family, I just can't say it enough, um, are in our thoughts and prayers here and not from all media and the Colin Thompson show. So we tried to pull back the football stuff. We, I just didn't like how people were capitalizing on him and trying to get viewers and followers and retweets. And I just like, we can't post any football stuff until we're ready to go. So we're back. We're ready to go. He's on the mend. And again, I just can't, can't, you know, again, I'm thinking about it. So it was very tough to do a show. There's a lot to discuss guys. Really excited for today's show. We got Adam, Brenneman joining us. Adam is a freaking rock star in this business. You guys are going to love the show. We're going to go live right into Adam. He's going to join us here in three minutes. I love doing the shows this way, you know, before, and everybody knows, which is normal at Jack and I'll do a little intro and then someone will join, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll end it and then we'll kick it, play a little music. And then we kick it over to the interview, right? Very normal podcasting kind of one-on-one, but I love this live stuff. I think it creates a, people can comment on here and join us while on the stream yard uh, on, on any of the social media, Jack does an unbelievable job with our team, hooking all this stuff up and all the tech so you guys can engage with the show. Um, so, but before Adam comes on, we got breaking news, Jack. You want to tell the fans about it? No, I'm kidding. I was going to think, I think I probably, <laughs> think I probably should. It's your baby. You can, you can. So we have breaking news here at not for long media. It has been something that we have been working on here for years now. I love our logo. It's a great logo, but I always want something a little bit more edgy, a little bit more eye popping. And it's hard because not for long media is my baby. And I love the logo. We have all this merch and we have a bunch of stuff with it on it, but we're going to, we wanted to update it. We wanted to make it a little bit more edgy. So without further ado, Jack, if people are watching this here on YouTube and the stream yard, let's pop the logo up. What do we got? Wow. <laughs> Jack gay, obviously with our, with our, you know, our initials, right? NFL, not for long. We wanted to have a spin, you know, and do it the right way and make it clean and professional and make sure it doesn't look like certain things so we can get in trouble. So uh, we, I mean, we beat the heck out of that, of, of really this logo here that you're looking at on the stream yard and by our social media, Jack will edit this and pop it up there. Uh, to really make sure we go, we got the audio in there. We got the mic in there. We got the letter and the logo and different fonts, all these different things uh, to make sure we're doing things the right way. So a new logo here at not for long media, a little edgier, a little bit more cutting edge. We're going to have hats made shirts, the whole nine. It's going to take a little bit, but we're going to get our swag, right? And if you have a not for long media, old hat, old logo, then you're an OG and we appreciate your love and support. What do you think of it, Jack? It looks sleek. Like you said, we kind of, this is very rigorous process. I mean, the mocks on mocks on mocks that we've kind of made ourselves and just trying to figure out for almost several months at this point. Cause I mean, we had just gone back and forth between what we wanted to do. And I think this was kind of the best thing we kind of came up with. I'm really proud of it. Excited of what we got here. No doubt about it. I can't thank you enough. Our team enough. We have a great team here. It's like a probably, I don't know. Was it like 15 people total with hosts, maybe 20, um, it's been great. And we do all this all remote. It's, I tell people that they're like, you're crazy, you know, but that's the way we do it. It's been fun. It's been a blast. I really, uh, you know, I really have enjoyed doing our show with our team and having a great time. So, um, let me check in here with Adam real quick and make sure we're good to go right live on air, Jackie. Um, so I guess we'll wait before we're waiting on Adam. We'll talk about our sponsor wealth advisory services, wealthadvisoryservices.com if you don't know them you should first class approach to manage your wealth i love your locations if you're in the northeast cape may Doylestown, pa is the main office can't beat that down the shore up at home um listen everybody's got a financial guy everybody's cousin you know friend uncle i get all that these are just and i have that too but i was fortunate enough to bump into these guys and get to know these guys through family and friends and they're truly the best. Honestly, I've been with a few different people. They are professional. They are honest. The bang for your buck element, for lack of a better term, is just unbelievable. The knowledge, the questions, the interaction, the friendship that comes with it. It's just it's just tremendous. So wealthadvisoryservices.com, Paul and Dave, 100 years of experience with their team. Two guys that were like Wall Street guys. I said, oh, we don't know. We really want this life. We want to go live in a great area, raise a family, start a business the right way. So it's local. This is not a, 
big conglomerate, but they have a ton of business in Doylestown. And I've been fortunate enough to work with them. Wealthadvisoryservices.com. Check them out. Awesome website. So good stuff for me. Good stuff from Jack and great stuff from Wealth Advisory Services. Guys, if you're going to a ball game this year, basketball season's here. Football, I think we had, someone said we had 13 games left. I think it was Michael McQuaid from the Ireland NFL show I joined. I follow him on Twitter, and he tweeted that 13 NFL games left, Jackie. So uh, sad to see, but it's a good time of year. This is, a, I mean, this is it. It's it's fucking, excuse me. Whoa, I just cursed on TV. Uh, <laughs> a little head bomb there, a little locker room. We're good. Everything's excellent. Sorry for the kids listening. It's the best time of year. Fires me up, man. I, I just can't. I wish we were in the playoffs this year. I'm I'm pissed. I really wanted to make it. You know, even though I've been on the practice squad, I wanted to be a part of this ride with these guys one more time. Uh, so, man, I'm pissed we didn't make the playoffs. As you can see, the F-bomb or half of the F-bomb that I said. Uh, luckily, we don't have a network, Jack. We are the network, so we can have some fun <laughs> and rip it up and have a good time. Guys, Seat Geek, promo code Colin Thompson, C O L I N T H O M P S O N, 20 bucks off your tickets, $50 uh, or more. Uh, it's a great deal because tickets are just ridiculous now. So just pop that promo code in and get your money off your tickets. Seat Geek, check it out. Guys, some sleep. It's the new year. We're all trying to be healthier. If you can tell by my voice here, we had a little fun the last couple of days in Carolina. A little re reminiscing, Jack. A little kumbaya. A little uh, beverages, perhaps. Eating maybe some, you know, little one too many quesos, one too many tacos, one too many cheesesteaks. Get the winning reviews. But, hey, it's the end of the season. You need a little farewell. So you want to get healthier, you got to sleep better. Calm yourself. Anxiety-free. I love some sleep. It helps me with it so much. Pop one last night, 8 o'clock. My eyes are banging shut at 9. But not in like an aggressive way where I'm like, can't get off the couch. It's like, oh, time to go to bed. Psalm's kicking in. Winding it down. Getting healthy this 2023, Jackie boy. And I absolutely love it. So promo code Colin. Promo code Colin for 10% off. Get Psalm Sleep, the best natural sleep product on the market. Shout out to our friends over at Miyamichi, the best Italian food in the Charlotte area. You can't beat it. You physically cannot beat it. It is the best Italian food in the Charlotte area. I absolutely love working with them. Go and tell Nick and Kimmy we said hi. They have just chicken parm, the, the freaking Utica greens. I had them the other day. I had to go back. We took a tray back to Charlotte, back to uh, Annapolis with us because that's how much we love it. We eat at this place all the time. The raviolis, the appetizer, the, they have steak bites. It's just ridiculous. So it's like brunch on Sunday vibe and then just great TVs, good time. Check them out, guys. Me and Michi, right on Lake Norman, right in Mooresville, 20 minutes from downtown Charlotte, the best Italian food in the Charlotte area. Adam Brenneman is in the house, Jackie boy. Big time. Adam, what's going on, man? How are you, man? Dude, you're, you're making me hungry talking about this Italian food. This guy's a character, man. Nick Bonanegro, he is – he used to be uh, like the number one car salesman in Albany, New York. Okay. He is cousin – he's uncle – excuse me. Yeah, his cousin is Brian Angelico, who you may know that name. He was a tight end coach at Pitt, Rutgers. He was Rutgers, right? Yep. Yeah. Probably recruited yeah. you. Yeah. And Ange went to the Bucks then, and then he was like uh, Green Bay, Cleveland, Green Bay, Washington, and then Carolina. For two years, okay. so I was with him. And he's like, hey, listen, you got to go to my boy's place, uh, Nikki Bonbon, up in uh, up at the lake. So, okay, we go up there. Well, my wife and, and I my wife and I end up going like three days a week. So uh, <laughs> now a sponsor of the show, so we're big fans, man. So how are Hello. you doing? What, what's going on in your world? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm I'm taking a breath now, now that the season's final – or the college football season's over. You know, it was it was a busy – a busy fall, but uh, but yeah, everything's good, man. Just just rocking and rolling. Excited to be back on here. How was how was your fall, man? A lot of a lot of fun stuff going on in Carolina. Yeah, I was just talking about it early on in the show, and it's fun we're doing this live. Usually, I just do the interview and then we clip it on, yeah. as you know. But I was like, you know, let's go live today. I haven't done a show in in two to three weeks, obviously with the the Hamlin situation. Yeah, and then my I had my uncle pass the week before. It was like Christmas. There was yeah. so much going on. Yeah. Um, and then Carolina, we, we were making a playoff run. So it was like a very, like, usually I'm like, good, I can hand, handle it, manage it. We got a, yeah. plenty of, we got plenty of off time in the league. People don't really understand that. Mm -hmm. um, 
really only one day a week, especially later in the year that you're technically have to be in the building until four thirty, five o'clock. Yeah. So, I mean, you have the whole night to, to do your deal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, things are good. It's been crazy. I was talking about it earlier in the show. I had, I was dealing with a little calf thing. It just wouldn't go away. I feel fine now. I feel great now. So that got me until like week eight and then practice squad the rest of the year. So I was on the peace squad the whole year, which is great just to get involved and be a part of it. And the guys in front of me did a great job. Everyone was healthy and had a great year. So yeah, it put me what, on the Island. What, when you're on peace squad, what does, what do you do during like the weekends? You don't travel, right? So you, I, are you like, I traveled, I carved out a, 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 a coaching role in a way I was making cutups for the guys during the week and we would watch them together after you know we'd oh, have cool. meet yeah we'd have like meetings Wednesday thir uh, Wednesday Thursday after practice and then I would mm -hmm. pop in and do like a we would do film with the tight end coach and then I would come on and do like twenty minutes with the guys talking about personnel because there's not enough time today for the coaches to do it there's, they, we'll we'll touch on things of course we go over it but yeah I'm like I pretty much said all right guys here's what I do for every game do you guys want to do it with me and they're all like heck yeah so yeah I do, got that do, role do you like coaching. I do. I love it. And then yeah. I, I had, I kind of got on game day. It was like, okay, here's a role. So I'm carrying the iPad around on game day. You know, we, we run duo, we run counter, we run ever. I pull it. They come right off the field. Bang. I got the iPad right there for him. Here's the front. Here's what they expect. Hey, we're gashing them yeah. on this drive. They're going to bring some pirate. They're going to bring some movement. They're going to bring pressure. Yeah. It's not going to be the same pictures throughout the game. So my tight end coach is doing one thing. And I, the nice thing with him, I again, I thanked him at the end of the year. Him and I are close. Kevin Gilbride Jr., he was tight end coach of mine for the Giants, Bears, and Carolina. So he knows me. So we can do this and have a really healthy, great relationship with the guys too. So I got, uh, I, I got a serious question now. Duo, okay? That's the play everyone's running in the NFL now. Three years ago, you never saw it. Is it – are you putting it in the zone family or are you putting it in the power family? It's gap scheme. It's right, power. You, you, you got it in the power family. Power, no pool. It's, got it. It's not even a question because it's an A-gap run. Well, it, it is, though. A lot of coaches – I know – I've been around coaches who put it in the zone scheme because there's no poolers. No. Heck no. That's a, that is a downhill, tight aiming points, A-gap. The ball's going in the A-gap until the A-gap absolutely disappears. So yeah. – this play, folks, for everyone listening, duo is just double teams at the point of point of attack. Leave the widest guy. Simple as that. We're not blocking the corner. If the ball bounces to the corner, he's got the back's got to make the corner miss. The, the corner, who's the right? Probably not. He's not the best. He's definitely not the best hacker exactly. on the defense. Yeah. Maybe some can, maybe some can't. But Christian McCaffrey or Chuba Hubbard or our guys in Carolina versus the corner, that's an advantage. So that's the play. For those that don't know it, and can't visualize it, go back to the Steelers days, Le'Veon Bell standing yeah. in the backfield for like 40 minutes, and then he'd make a cut and be gone. Uh, that's the play. So uh, he's essentially reading the mic and trying to pull the mic to the double teams, and then he's going to hit it somewhere in there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go gap scheme, Adam. It's a great question. We're going football. I didn't plan going no <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm asking you questions now. We, we, we flipped it around. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I, I go on when, when I go on shows, I love asking the host questions because it, I think that that's when you, it becomes less of a show and more of a conversation. Yeah. Well, you, so. it, it, that calling games this past year, you know, when you, when you call a game, you, um, you meet with the coaches, you know, so you have, you have the head coach, OC and D coordinator for like 45 minutes each. It's a, it's a long time. So I would, um, you know, you got to figure out what to talk to him about. And as the analyst, like the play by play guy kind of relies on you to like run the conversation. And I used to always love hearing, I would ask every OC about duo and like how they view it. Like, how do they use it? How, you know, because there's different ways, what formation, you know, a lot, you've seen the, a lot of people run duo out of the bunch, right. With the tight, the three by one, like bunch with the tight end, the, the tight ends, like two, 12 personnel, but you've seen them now run it from like an 11 personnel look. It's like becoming more and more popular. Anyway, Ask them about that. We always chat about that. And then defenses, defensive coordinators always got to get them on like simulated pressure packages and like how they, how, what, what they do with like, or whatever you call it. Some people call it bogus pressure, but what I'm, you know, what I'm referring to is like when you drop one, rush one, are you still rushing four, but it looks like a blitz, you know? Yeah. Simulator. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Simulated pressure. So it's, um, those are my two things. Like I always, that's like what I ask every D coordinator, every offensive coordinator, because you just get to hear them talk football. And then it gets them to realize that you know football as well. So it gets like a certain chemistry going between the analysts on the call that's calling the game and the coordinator. It opens them up a little bit. So I would always start off with those two questions. That's tremendous too. And they're like, oh, oh, who's your OC at Penn State? Oh, okay, and UMass. Exactly. Who's your, who's your yeah. OC there? Who's your quarterback coach? 
Oh, yeah. I know that guy. Oh, he's good. I hear, you know, and yeah. then boom, that's how this world goes. Cause we literally know everybody. There was a, the coaching convention was in Charlotte this week. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I, Everyone I, there. <laughs> it was like copy and paste. Everybody looked the same, all wearing their stuff out. And in our building, <laughs> If you wear Panthers gear out in public, it's a fine in our room. We find guys. Yeah. So he's like, fine, fine, fine. I'm walking around. It's like That's Kent hilarious. State, University of Miami, Iowa State. You're like, all right, guys, can can you just – when you go out, can you bring another pair of clothes? But I yeah. get it. It's just one giant marketing event, but it was good. Yeah. I was able to see my high school coach, Steve Devlin, and have a couple beers with him. I was either – Scholar Morningweg, Matt Johns, all my buddies yeah. that I played with that went into coaching. I saw the Nebraska staff. So big, that was – Big Matt. Well, isn't Matt the QB's coach at William & Mary, right? He is, man. He's doing yeah. a great job. He's killing it, yeah. He's, he's the man. He's – the yeah, you know, from our area, you know, from Eastern you – know, all of Pennsylvania. He's just got great football people. And, no doubt. Uh, I mean, every staff's full of them. So I, I'll go back to this, though. Because, again, wasn't part of the plan, but I love it this way. Talk about your kind of schedule when it comes to, okay, I got an assignment this weekend. I'm in Toledo on a Saturday. Talk about when you're flying there, the meetings you're having up to it, and then your departure. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, the, the whole thing was new to me, honestly. You know, I, I didn't even plan on calling games until, um, it's funny, man, like, and you and I have talked about it a lot, just like in the content world, like what can happen when you, when you're posting content, like somehow someone at ESPN, like saw one of my videos they reach out to me and we're like, hey, like we may have one or two games for Adam to call this year on like our lowest level network if he wants to do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll call games. Never done it before. No clue what I'm doing. Um, but the first game I got was Akron, St. Francis at Akron for a uh, home opener for Akron week zero on ESPN three or ESPN plus one of those mm-hmm. Um ESPN production, but it was it was obviously a low level game. But that was like my first one. No clue what to expect, but um, but it, I mean, it, dude, live television is a whole different beast now. Like you're like just talking in the level I'm at, you know, like that I was doing. Like even even much toned down from like what the big time games are doing. But like I mean, you know, the, just stuff that you never even realize that I never realized when I'm watching a game. Like the monitors, the replays, the producer, the people talking in your ear. The hardest part is that, Colin. When you have when you're on live TV and there's people talking while you're talking in your ear telling you stuff and you and you the habit is to respond to the people talking like there was one time my first game when we're we're live on air and my the the producer's like hey Adam I'm gonna like about to show you a replay of of the of the of the touchdown here in a second and I respond I said I said sounds good and I'm live on air. <laughs> um but man it's just like learning curves man you just you just learn that like you gotta like block it all out but anyway the schedule you asked about was uh it's it's during the week you, you you find out normally it's like a 13 day notice you know normally the schedules come out um you so i'll know like two weekends in advance um but when you're when you're doing back to back you know games in consecutive weeks you obviously don't have time you're prepping for one game at a time um so normally my prep would start um would start on like the Monday before the, before a game, and then um, you're meeting with coaches on Wednesday, and then you're uh, Wednesday or Thursday, and then you're traveling Friday to the to the game, and then you're there, you know, in the morning. You, you go Saturday morning. You're there like four hours before the game. You're doing run throughs. You're practicing the open on camera. You know when they come in, and it's you know Colin when it's uh, Chris Collinsworth and Al, and they're like doing the on camera the sticks. You practice all that. Um, and run through that but I mean the, the preparation really the hardest part it's a little bit harder than I think it is to, like call NFL games NFL like you know a lot of the players right like you I could tell you right now starters on a lot of the NFL teams who the quarterbacks are where they came from all that kind of stuff in college especially when you're calling like Mac in the I did I did Mac AAC um, in the big 12 I did the big 12 game as well so um but in those, like, you don't know any of the players. So, like, you know no one on the on the roster until six days before. And you got to, like, end up mem- – I mean, you know, you do have, you have notes in, like, a sheet in front of you that helps you. But, like, you don't have a lot of time to, like – guy catches the ball. I don't have time to look down at my notes and, like, read all, what I wrote about him. So, you got to kind of remember that. I mean, you can get into a good flow. You got to know the skill guys really well. And you got to know, like, who's going to touch the football. And you got to have something – you know, I always had like one or two things that like I knew I would say as soon as I caught the ball. If it, if I wasn't going to dissect the play, I had something that if no, if the tight end number 80, um, whatever his name was, caught the ball, I knew what I was going to say about him. You know, he's long, transferred from this school, 
coaches rave about him, had a big spring, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's the hard part in college, man. You got to turn, you're getting, you're learning so many new guys every week and you got to kind of memorize a lot of the guys' names. The hardest job though is the play by play because they actually, they actually got to know everybody, you know, color guys can kind of get away. If you don't know a guy, you know, or you can kind of decide what you want to say or what you want to dissect, but the play by play guy, that, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough job now. It's brutal. I, I wanted to get a shot at it when I was at Temple. Mm-hmm. Adam knows, but for those of you who I did. Yeah, you call games, yeah. Yeah, I called games for three years for Temple football, and it was awesome. Traveled with the team, had a blast. I still knew the staff, so that was a whole yeah. other unique thing. Jeff Collins' staff had carried a lot of the Matt Rule guys around. So, yeah, I had a blast with it. But there's so many things that you're saying now. Well, what I was trying to say back to that point was Harry Donahue, like, was not going to be able to make a game. I'm like, let me call play-by-play. Because I wanted that experience, mm-hmm. and I know the whole team, so it was yeah, so much. Yeah. And I, they were playing like USF, and I played against USF for four years, three years. Yeah, I called their game. I know everybody. Yeah. So, you know, so I, were you doing? Were you doing? Were you on the radio or TV? Radio, radio, radio. got it. Yeah. So, so which has its own challenges, right? Obviously, a little bit. No different. doubt, you got to talk more. <laughs> yeah, it was a pressure situation, but dude, first off. How many times did you say this player transferred this year from? Oh my gosh, man! Every I mean, honestly, to be honest, man, I I, I used to use that a lot in, you know, when you know you know how it is, man. When you call games, like you evolve, like what your style is, you know. And early on in the year, I was very storyline heavy as an analyst. Like I was a lot of I would fall back on like that's how I would be because you know? that's what our that's what a locker room is, hey, no doubt. Yeah. This this guy, you know, Adam, he's from Central PA. He, you know, he's exactly. the tight end in the country, popped his knee, right? That's the whole stuff. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. But yeah. sometimes a viewer gets pissed, like, hey man, I don't want to hear what, where the kid's from. I'm like, what do you See, mean? It, it's it's, cool a, it's a fine line. And like some of the producers at ESPN like ended up being like, you know, it, you, you gotta mix it in, right? Like the the the, hu- the human part of the sport is so important. But like, if it's a massive play and it's a third and fifteen, and they converted it on a dig route, like you got to explain why that dig route worked. You can't just talk about the guy called the ball and you're like, this guy transferred from this school. You know, you got to explain why what happened there. You know, and, and so you, you learn and you evolve and and you uh, and you end up, you know, fit, kind of figuring out what your style is. I think the different the thing about TV and radio too, and like so many young guys in TV, and I struggled with it and got better. Was like, you don't have to talk all the time in TV. You know, like the, sometimes less is more. Like sometimes just let, you know, I, I remember the first year couple games I called, like uh, home team would score a huge touchdown. And of course, like right after I'm talking about the play, but like they're like, just let it breathe. Like let the let the crowd noise speak for itself. Give it 15, 10, you know, five, 10 seconds to like not say anything. Let people hear the crowd noise. And all like, the kids are running around. Yeah, the field. So, exactly. So you like, on, but radio is different because radio, if you're, if it's dead air, people are like, did, did I lose signal? <laughs> you know, yeah, unless it's so, rocking, unless it's like a rocking environment. Exactly. For those yeah. that like radio, you got to Google it. It's on the top of my head right now. There's a red zone for college football radio. It's on really? one. Of, yes. It's incredible. I found it through a friend is talking randomly and I listen to it like if I'm doing stuff. If we had like our bye week, so or uh, Thursday night football. So I was like doing stuff around the house back at home, and I popped the AirPods in. And I'm like leaf blowing, mowing the lawn, <laughs> and it's incredible. Like, okay, we're gonna go here live. Let's go down to the Army uh, home announcers here. Oh, Army is Army's about to score. Okay, we're gonna go to uh, Adam Brenneman and the staff calling the Temple game today because Temple's in the red zone, and it's incredible. Yeah. It's all the home stuff. So you listen to like Florida scoring all the home guys, yeah. And then you go to like, all right, Tennessee's about to score here. Let's go back to the call. Tennessee just completed a 70 yard bomb for a touchdown. So although people like radio, it's freaking awesome. I put it on the house on Saturdays, mute to TV, and just listen to that in the background. So that's awesome. Yeah, here's that's a random awesome. random note, but that's how yeah. I might do it. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> One thing I struggled with too was I prepped. You know, I I, I should say I prepped, but I, I was I, I had my notes that I really want to get across. Mm-hmm. right i have the one or two points that i think that are really strong that aren't hey we can't turn the ball over you can't fumble yeah right you know? <laughs> which again that's a part of the game but yeah i would try to get into third down stuff and scoring touchdowns in the red zone instead of settling for field goals and how that affects games and whatever a lot of coach rule stuff i would just mm-hmm. take that and just go back to my notes and so i struggle with that though like i wouldn't want to force a point i'd be like we're gonna go back to like four plays ago here because this is what i thought about this play and i was like 
You can't do that. You just got to yeah. swallow your pride and move on. Did you have a good point or two after, like during every game or a drive, where you're like, man, I want to say that, but yeah, you no, I so struggle it, with that. Yeah, it's 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 um, you, you make a good point. Like you can't force, you can't ever force it, and you can't ever feel like you're like trying. You're where it comes off like unnatural to talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I found as I got as the year went on, I started doing what I kind of called like themes of the game. And I had a one cheater in front of me that just where it was most helpful was the first couple drives, right? Like when the game isn't kind of going yet and you kind of need to fill space and talk about stuff. I had a kind of a themes of the game and I used to have like, you know, if it was the Buffalo, um, Miami of Ohio game, I had like Buffalo on offense, Miami of Ohio on defense. Here's my point about Miami's or Buffalo's offense. Here's my point about Miami's defense. And, uh, and I use that, and I normally got that into the first drive. But I, what, what I, and what I think what you're referring to is like you definitely over prep a lot. Like yeah. you, I would you have, have so much stuff that I that I had about different players and like storylines and talking, you know, just different stuff. And I would look at my board after the game and realize I used like maybe two percent of all, of any of it because as the game goes on, instead of talking about what I saw on film the last three weeks, I'm talking about the game and like, Oh, they've been so bad on third down today. Oh, they're, they can't handle the the defensive ends having a field day. They got to start chipping. Like you're talking about what you're seeing in the game that you stop using all the prep you use after like the first couple of drives is kind of how, kind of what I found. You only prep for the first real, like, okay, Adam, exactly. what are your thoughts on the game today? And then the rest is all like, all right, here's what you're happened. Just reacting to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's great, fun. Man. It's fun stuff though, man. Be, be, being on, being live on air. Like it's a, it's fun. It's definitely, it's definitely like a, I think other than like coaching, it's probably the closest you get to like a game day feeling, you know, where like you got to edge a little bit. Yeah. Like, cause like you're prepping, it's like football. You're prepping all week for like three hours on Saturday, you know, like mm -hmm. you just, and, and you either perform well and like, it's not like a win or lose situation. And like, you know, if you, if you're good and can be, and can talk and, and prep, like you're going to be good on air, like unless you just flop. So like, it's not like the win or lose feeling, but like you do feel like you put in a lot of work and then you get rewarded one time. Then you go do it all over again. Just like, just like, you know, football, football weeks. I remember calling game and it was Temple, Maryland. It was uh, Rod Carey's first year and they beat Maryland ranked. Mm -hmm. Temple always had Maryland number really weird. The Maryland team could be like yeah. the best ever and Temple always beats him. It's funky. <laughs> now, next week we may lose a Temple to whoever, but yeah. to a D1 AA team, but we keep beat Maryland. It's very weird. So, and it's good for recruiting because Temple's got a ton of really good Baltimore, Maryland, yeah. Virginia, DCAA kids, uh, DMV kids, excuse me. So uh, I remember calling the Maryland game and it was awesome. Like I'm turning my mic off. Like, cause I'm like, we're high five and F yeah. And the yeah. box because like yeah. it's Paul Palmer, who's a hall of famer temple. It's me. And then Harry Donnie, who were all like temple lifers. So it was like huge win. The place going crazy. Like I had electric feel through my body. I feel like I played mm -hmm. in a game, like a little adrenaline. Plus it's your school. It's a little bit different. For sure. Um, but like, I remember calling in the 97, five, the fanatic on my way home. <laughs> never forget it. Um, D line and was doing a show and she's like talking about the temple game. And I called, I was in bumper to bumper traffic. And she's like, we got Colin, thompson calling in temple football player well, colin what do you got i'm like i'm on like yeah I'm, I'm on the i'm on the bridge walt whitman i'm stuck in traffic like i remember being <laughs> like all right this is fun man like i could see myself Let's doing do the perfect moving on because it was just something about it i also it scratches the itch and i think too for guys yeah. like you and i and anybody in this color position you have a bigger personality I love like getting food before the game. Ross Tucker Jack works with Jack. Ross takes a video of the whole spread. You get a coffee. You meet some people that hadn't recruited you to this school, yeah. recruited you to that school. You meet a journalist. You make connections, and you, and it kind of it's a cool like twenty four hours. You get like transplanted in like uh, whatever Lexington, Kentucky for twenty four hours. You send the night. And then, boom, you do the show and you're out the next day. So yeah. there was something cool about that. And then you're like home on Sunday and you're like, oh, all right, I'm going to have a beer and watch football. So exactly. Yeah, yeah it's good, man. I want to I want to transition. It was awesome stuff there. Really good. Um, college football playoff. What the hell happened? <laughs> I mean, a lot happened. I think, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll admit my, my pick for the championship game. I told everyone I was all week was hammering the under in the game and, uh, and <laughs> got absolutely destroyed. And I'm, I'm, I've been hearing, hearing that one a lot. My, my philosophy was right though. My philosophy was that Georgia was going to dominate TCU and that TCU was going to, was going to score any points. 
all that was true other than than Georgia covered the the, the total with their own points. So, um, but I think, man, I mean, here's the reality right now, and like, and this is no longer going to be the case starting next year with the playoff. But you know, it's not if you make the five, if you make if you're one of the four best teams that 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 get ranked by this random committee. It's not that challenging to make the championship game, right? You got to win one game. TCU wins that wins their semifinal game. I think they lose it eight times out of ten. Uh, that's easy to say now in hindsight, right? But they beat beat Michigan, which is shocking. Um, in the future, though, that team, that TCU team, isn't a conference champ. If it, like if if they're in the next year's college football playoff in um, you know in this year. They're an at-large bid, so they're not they're not a first round buy. They're they're um, they they lost to Kansas, right? They didn't win the Big Twelve. They lost to Kansas State, and they're going to have to win three games and beat all the. And they they would have faced, you know, if you look at the bra- how the bracket would have played out, they would have had to play Georgia in the semifinal game. So my point is, I think the days of like seeing a absolute blowout in the championship game are probably it's probably not going to happen again because the road to get there is going to be much more difficult than just winning one game, scoring a bunch of points. But with all that said. I mean, what a job Sonny Dykes did with TCU in year one. I mean, just really, really remarkable. Um, but I think everyone would have liked to see a a, a better uh, better championship game. But yeah, it was it, it was a it was a little bit of chaos in the playoff. I went like probably football mecca for when it comes to coaches. I am at that point in time. We were in Charlotte, and I'm at a bar. And I mean, again, we're talking folks a thousand football coaches in one room. Yeah, in one bar. And it was just like no one was watching the game. I mean, yeah. nobody. Everyone's like, "This is a joke." All right, can I get another? Uh, yeah, Kate? am I going to say Dakota, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get another Kate May Brewing Company beer, even though they don't sell them. <laughs> that's been our only beer sponsor, so I'll never talk about another beer on here. But uh, I love it. yeah, so no, it was very unique in that perspective. I want to hear your thoughts. I, I, you know, I'm a Cowherd fan. I think he is articulate. I think he has interesting takes. Do I agree with everything? No. Do, do I like the way he drums them up and he compares them to? you know, growing an apple tree in your backyard. And that's what equals, you know, that's why that that team has had success, whatever he does. I think it's really cool. And I think it's really unique. I think he's the best when it comes to that three hour radio slot. It's a radio show on TV, Mm -hmm. which I think is really good instead of a TV show that's on the radio. Yeah. So I've always been a coward fan. Um, And his thing is like, don't dilute it. Yeah, great. Everybody wants to expand. And I think 10 is cool. It's going to be great. You know, everyone's going to be like jockeying to get into the playoffs, but they're going to get smoked by the third overall team. Or, you know, that's my fear is yes, there's going to be I more games. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be more games. There's going to be more excitement. It's going to be a March Madness feel, but it's really not any given Sunday in college football for all teams. Now, Adam just said it any given Sunday, TCU, they got a great win over a really good freaking you know, Michigan team. So my point to all that is like, there's going to be some blowouts. It just won't be blowouts in the national title games, which what you're saying. I, I, yeah, it's a great point. And I, I, I've honestly gone back and forth a ton on the, the playoff expansion. Um, and obviously it's coming. So the debate's kind of over, but whether it's going to be good or bad, you can still talk about, I think the national title game <clears throat> made me feel even stronger about supporting the expansion, but what you're saying is true. And I thought about it a lot. You know, what makes college football so great is that every single Saturday matters. If you lose a game earlier in the early in the season, it will affect the rest of the year for you. You can't lose games in college football and still be okay. It's the reason that college football TV ratings, I believe, trump literally the NBA finals game seven. The a regular season college football game will have better TV ratings than the NBA, than the NHL than the World Series, because college football, every single game matters. And, you know, just because you expand something doesn't make it better. Sometimes less is more, right? And it makes it more competitive and it's more exciting. And the reason that March Madness doesn't get the same TV ratings that the college football playoff does is because, right, there's more games. Now, they're not they're not that important. You know, where again, regular season college football beats all them in TV ratings. I think it's a good example of, like, what makes college football so exciting is that everything matters at all points and that that will go away a little bit although we're not talking a 64 team bracket you know so it'll still be there but like you know you dilute it a little bit i've heard a few people kind of give some good analogies about it you know coward i heard josh pate have a good kind of thing about um 
you know, kind of taking out the sanctity of the playoff is, is not a good thing, but um, it's here, man. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. I'm excited because I think Penn State now could finally get in the playoff and see how it goes. <laughs> it took them 10 games. Listen, <laughs> I, I used to be such a Penn State hater. I can't be anymore. Pat Kraft's my boy. So uh, the new yeah, AD of Penn he's State. He's doing a great job, man. I, I, uh, he, he's, he, I've heard great things. He's great. I mean, he's former player, college football guy. Like, he is awesome. So he's yeah. Penn State people who absolutely love Pat. Hugging players off the bus. Like, he's jacked up. When I was calling games at Temple, I'd call games like 10 yards from him. So when we'd score, I'd mute my mic, give him a huge hug after a big, like, big play, <laughs> and then turn my mic back on and talk about the excitement on the field. So, That's sweet. Um, yeah, he's a good man. He's a really good man. Okay, so. And I and you are a star in this business. You do a great job, guys. Follow Adam on Instagram. Check out all the stuff he's got going on. He's got the media company. He's got the podcast. He's got the, the shorts. He does an amazing job with. And a unique perspective on just business of football, playing football, being All-American at the highest level, getting her radio, ma- radio, media, TV. You do a freaking killer job. So I like your take on the NIL stuff, the pay-for-play stuff. Can you talk about that? I know it's the hottest topic. We beat the hell out of it on this show. Yeah. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. But again, I don't think it affects the product. Everyone thought, oh, no one's going to watch football anymore. Oh, and then you're watching the game in November and you don't even think about it. So uh, I think it hurts the development of players. I think my take would be players can't leave for two years unless the coach that recruited you let it leave. Yeah. You got to get there for two years, guys, as a player, my opinion, because – you can develop in those two years. You can say, I hate this school. Like when I was at Florida and broke my foot, I was like, why did I come here? I'm not close to yeah. home. I have no one to help me. This place sucks. And then the next year I'm like, this is the greatest place on earth. I can't leave. Even though they're telling me I got to leave because I'm medically disqualified. So <laughs> I think it, it, you, you're an 18 year old. You're not a, you're not a business person yet. You don't have any mindset of any clarity. You yeah. know, you really think you do. You don't. We all thought we did. We didn't. So that's my take on it. Two years or your coach leaves, then you can do what you want. Uh, what are your thoughts? Man, I have a lot of thoughts on, on NIL and my, and my mindset's shifted a little bit. Um, I think the, the, the major issue and the major disconnect, like, like I, I'm a fan of NIL. I like NIL. I was, a, I was a proponent of it and, and speaking, speaking about it, then how it should come into effect for a long time. I, I mm-hmm. remember it you know, being in freaking college and like writing papers on why players should be able to make money on, you know, back then it was like, no one called it NIL. It was like marketing deals. I was calling it Um, because it just felt that's like, what should, what should be right. What, what no one I think saw coming was how NIL in its purest form was, was NIL in its purest form is the, the, is, the quarterback doing deal a deal with the car dealership locally and the offensive lineman doing a deal with the restaurant and you know the, the town restaurant and making some money. Like I'm all for that. Quarterback getting sponsored by Adidas and like be getting paid a ton of money. All good. Like I'm all for it. The challenging part with NIL is in college football in college sports. You have one aspect that makes it really really different than pro players getting getting marketing deals, and that's recruiting. That is the fact that you get to choose where you go in college. So when you add recruiting into the mix with NIL. And when you add in the transfer portal, it is a bad combination. And the reason, and and because it's basically just pay for play at that point, it's no longer just NIL deals and guys doing brand deals and marketing deals with, with businesses, it's pay for play. And, you know, you talk about a guy like Kenny Pickett was the quarterback at Pitt, right? Starting quarterback. He, he was, he made probably a hundred grand in NIL deals his last year at Pitt. He was the number one quarterback in the country. He was a Heisman finalist. He was the first quarterback pick in the draft and made a hundred grand in NIL deals. Where guys that weren't as good as him were making two million. And the differentiator was those guys were in the transfer portal and were on the open market. And they were getting bid at to get them to come to their school. Where Kenny Pickett got what he probably is actually worth to a real brand, right? Like he's probably worth, you know, for a brand like in Pittsburgh, like he's probably worth a hundred grand. Like uh, and you know this, Colin, guys in the NFL, I think we've talked about this before, guys in the NFL 
complain all the time that they don't make enough money in marketing deals. I've heard so many guys, my friends that are like, man, like I make like 50 grand in brand deals. Like, you don't make a dollar. dollar. People, no one makes yeah. a dollar. And I'm a starting tight end in the NFL. Like, you know, guys are, or I'm a starter here and like, I make a hundred grand in marketing deals. We have a starter that I'm very close with. He's in the NFL. He's a starting tight end. He said he's never been paid a dollar. In marketing deals, yeah, just, yeah, just, just close. But, but if he was in college transferring schools, he'd be worth one point five million. Guys in the guys in college football this year made way more money yeah. than the, like the big like say there's probably a hundred guys in college football that made more money than NFL players this year. Yep, and and the reasoning is because they're getting persuaded to to go to a certain school, not because of what they're actually worth to a brand. NFL guys are getting paid what they're actually worth. The business is in marketing expenses because they need to see a return on investment. There's no return on investment other than football performance on the field, which is pay for play. So my point is what we're talking about is disguised as NIL, but it's not NIL. So like, let's just call it what it is. One is NIL where like Kenny Pickett does a deal with the car dealership and makes 20 grand. The other is pay for play. And the other is persuading guys to come to your school and paying them to do so through collectives and through that. So number one, they're two different things. They're not both NIL, right? Like we're call everyone's calling it that, but they're not really the same thing. One's pay for play, one's real NIL. So let's just call it pay for play. And then the, the conversation goes, are we okay with pay for play? You can make a case for, yeah, like let's just let guys get paid to transfer schools. Like that's what they're worth to be to, to donors and boosters, let them get paid. But what I don't like is when we disguise it as NIL and it's like, oh, we're letting guys make money off their brand image and likeness. We're really not. We're just paying them to transfer schools. That's not actually what – they're not actually getting paid for their brand image and like or name image and likeness. That makes sense? A yeah, bit? I love it. <laughs> I, and again, folks, Adam and I, go get paid, young kings, because guess what? Adam and I, we were number one tight end in the country in 2012, number one tight end in the country in 2013. We would have been, I mean, happy. All I wanted oh, is – great. All you can, I just wanted a bar tab at the Swamp. The bar in Gainesville. That's all I wanted. Eating, beers, <laughs> happy. But I mean, what would what do you think the market is for the top tight end in the country? What do you think the number is to come to your school? I know it's a broad number, but what do you think? I mean, it's over hundred grand. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously quarterbacks different. I would say, I think like if you talk the most of the top tight uh, top tight end transferring, I think like his NIL offers would be like a couple hundred grand, a couple three hundred grand maybe. I think would be like the offer to like collective saying. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see it being much more than that. I do think some numbers are inflated as well, like what we're hearing about quarterbacks and stuff. But yeah, because an agent um, saying, hey, why would, why yeah, would you not? Trying, you know how agents yeah. work, man. They're trying, especially in, in this game. So, um, but yeah, man, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy world. But I think, you know, really the people complaining about it the most are the coaches, right? You know, they're, they're the ones that got to deal with, with the players. And, and it's just an absolute nightmare for coaching right now and having to, you know, what are, no, also, what are the rules? Like, what are you allowed to do? What are you not allowed to do? What are you allowed to, you know, there's different state laws that are in effect versus like the federal legislature. I mean, it's just an absolute chaos <laughs> and mess. Um, but I mean, it's still, as you said, man, like everyone said it was going to ruin the sport forever. And I don't think, it, I think we saw him see one of the wildest seasons of college football and the best TV ratings it's had in a long time. <laughs> the product's still going to stay the same. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be great. But the problem is, what's the development of the actual individual player? For sure. these players? Are players getting stuck in the transfer portal? Like, hey, no one picked me up. I'm on the street. I, I think, I think you hear about that. You hear about that a lot. I mean, guys that transfer without kind of like I, I don't think you're very smart if you hop in the portal and don't don't have a place to go to right there's Even ways to do that, that tampering to know. but there's ways to do it that are also allowed which is like yeah. not great but like you can have your trainer reach out to a coach somewhere and the coach is allowed to talk to him you know that's that's allowed that, that's how they get around it um <laughs> this is nuts which man. is ridiculous but <laughs> but um nuts. yeah but I mean at the end of the day I think a lot of guys are having to transfer down and, and it's a trickle down effect right more and more schools, you know, when I was at ASU, we had a strategy. This was the beginning of the transfer portal. It was like, hey, normally we'd take 25 high school kids, but now we're going to take 13 high school kids and we're going to take 12 transfers. You know, that number, and then it affects the high school kids. There's less spots for high school kids, and they all trickle down to, you know, to now more kids that would have gone to FBS are now going FCS because there, there weren't spots, to, you know, to go to. And I just – I shot a video on this yesterday that I'll be posting soon. It, I broke down kind of like how it's affecting JUCO. And how junior college kids, a junior college kid, those spots are getting filled up by transfer portal kids. So a JUCO kid who normally would have went to Ole Miss is now going to Southern Miss because it's all trickling down, right? You know, and the, so the the talent level almost elevates at lower levels because there's not enough uh, 
spots at all these schools. But the NCAA changing, I, I saw they changed the rule where there there's just the 85 scholarship limit now. There's no like there's no um, limit per class so you can sign. You just can't go over the total number, which is good, I think, for like roster management. And in this day of NIL and guys transferring and transfer portal, like you know, when you would lose 30 players because only signed 25, like that was a, that was brutal. You know, so they they kind of changed that rule. It's the one the one good thing the NCAA has done in the last 20 years. <laughs> Again, guys, yeah, right. That's all in order. Just kind of real on the time, really. Yeah, don't, um, hey, don't don't get me going on that, man. I'll yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Adam again is unbelievable. I'm going to wrap up with Adam here in a second. My last question for you: a couple players. If I'm an NFL fan, I'm an NFL front office. I'm an NFL uh, coach. That they should keep an eye on to try to, you want them a part of your organization in 2023 that are in college football right now yeah. that are leaving seasons over these, these one, two, three guys, they could be big names. They could be small names. Could be a guy you cover in the Mac. Who are three guys that you're like, they're guys that will make it in the NFL. And that's who you want on your football team. I think, um, one guy, Donnell Brown, defensive end from St. Francis, is going to be a guy that surprises a lot of people. I called two St. Francis games, which is so ironic because they're FCS, but one was they were playing Akron. One was I called an, an FCS playoff game, so they were in, they were in that Sweet. game. Don, Donnell Brown, defensive end from there, big, long, edge defender, uh, can really run, great hips. Uh, he's, he'll, he'll be – I think he's going to the senior bowl. He'll get drafted. Um, I think from a – you know, I, I've been getting a lot of flack for this because he's he's a friend of mine, and I get a lot of flack for uh, promoting my buddies. But um, I, I really think that Will Levis will be the first quarterback picked in the draft. I, I I said this last year about Kenny Pickett, and everyone called me crazy. I think Will, number one, he's going to dominate meetings, meetings with GMs. Hey, people will fall in love with him. He's going to test out of the out of the zoo at the at the freaking combine, and Will. Is gonna is gonna remind so many people of Josh Allen, and and you know how it is, man. Like people, when when something proves it's worked, the GMs they fall in love with it, man. They're like, and everyone who's the, if if you're a GM and you're in a meet, if you're an owner and you're in a meeting right now, if you're if you're the Texans, if you're if you need a quarterback, who are you to saying we need a guy like this? You're you're saying we need a guy like Josh Allen, like that. That's who you're looking at. Maybe Mahomes, but it, you know, but like you're. You want Josh Allen. Like, that's the prototype we want. Levis is the closest thing to that. I think he's going to be – I think he should be the first quarterback pick, although we had not a great season. Uh, we've seen that – I mean, Josh Allen played at Wyoming. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's like it, – that's not he had, a he had that really good team at Wyoming. Exactly. Their, they they were bad. Country, and then, boom, he went down the next year. They lost all those players. That Wyoming exactly. team was loaded his junior exactly. year. Exactly. So, I think Levis is going to remind a lot of people of Josh Allen. Um, and uh, – yeah, I think I think too the Penn State's got a great tight end coming out, Brenton Strange, who I think is gonna surprise a lot of people. Zach Kuntz is a tight end from Old Dominion, who's six eight dude, who's long, lanky from Pennsylvania. Um, was the number one tight end that one of the top tight ends in the country coming to high school, transferred to uh, transferred from Penn State to Old Dominion. Um, he's he's a long dude who's uh who got hurt a little bit, but he's gonna be he'll he'll run like a four or five at the combine, be an absolute freak. Um no, I don't yeah. like all these tight ends doing doing good at him. I, I know, right? I know I should have next that. year. Dude, the Panthers better not don't take them, Panthers. <laughs> no one. Dude, any team I go to next do not draft these yeah. guys now. I, and those guys actually aren't very good, man. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'll walk in the room, look at them, I'm like, oh man, I only got a couple of years left if I'm lucky. Yeah. So no, no but... it's good stuff. Um okay. Where can people find you? What do you got going on with the with the podcast? Like touch base with all that with all our listeners so they can follow you. Yeah. I mean, you just find me on social media at, at Adam Brenneman um, across every platform there is. Post a bunch of content on there. Um, got some cool podcast stuff coming up. Release a podcast like more so uh, uh, like in-person interviews. Um, going down to do uh, Kate Klumnick, quarterback at Clemson. Actually going there Monday to do him. He's this, just got – you know, he's now the starting quarterback at Clemson. So – um, so that'll be fun. That'll be coming out next week sometime. So I'm excited. That's great. You just, you do a great job, man. I'm a fan, you know, we're friends, but I'm a fan as well. Um, Jack's a fan too. And, you know, we have a, we have a lot of mutual friends in the business. It's been great following you doing, doing your thing. So oh, man, it's been fun home. watching you grow this thing, man. You got, you got <laughs> tons of shows now. It's been fun. I remember when it was just you, man, now you got a whole, whole network. So it's been, it's been fun to watch, man. Congrats on everything. Thank you, buddy. I got good people. As you know, that's what it takes to help you too. So it's been a, it's been a blast. Jack and I are going to pop in and finish the show. 
Appreciate it. Great, guys. Adam Brenneman. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, buddy. man. Appreciate it. All right, Jackie boy. Adam's good, isn't he? God, he's good. Phenomenal. I mean, he's future star in the entire sports media industry, as we've talked about at length. No doubt, man. These tight ends, man. We've got our acts together. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so he's a beast. I wanted to finish the show up. Uh, we, we've been going an hour. And uh, but still, I still think we can finish the show up. Jack and I, some things I want to hit on too. Bar of the week, haven't done one of those in a while. I want to hit on the bus one stuff, Jackie. So I appreciate your patience with me. Appreciate everybody tuning in again. Everything we do here brought to you by Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com. So, bar of the week, it's been a while, Jack. It's been a while, it really has. And I people that's the number one thing people come up to me about is Sam Bonin and bars of the week. So I also, people, people like the bus one stuff too. So I, again, appreciate everybody tuning in and your support and your feedback because Lord knows we need it. The bar of the week this week at the Colin Thompson show is Smokey Joe's cafe in Charlotte, North Carolina. I went there the other night, Tuesday night, shout out to my boy, Jack, actually, who is a bartender at workman's friend, another great bar and will be a bar of the week on this show as well. He's like, Hey man, meet me Smokey Joe's cafe in Charlotte Tuesday night. It's open mic night. Okay, great. It's my last night in Charlotte. I'm driving out Wednesday morning. Let's go. I'll go have a couple beers. Hang out. Open mic. Eh, see how that goes, right? Not so fast. Unbelievable performances. Like, I mean, literally, like I was, I sent videos to my dad. He loves, you know, live music, great guitar players. And my, I told my dad was open mic night. He's like, you're lying to me. I'm like, I swear. The, there was like, they'd all play two songs and it was like a dozen bands. It was unbelievable. The bar is so cool. The, the signage on the wall, it's old school. You pull up, you're like in an industrial district, you have no idea where you are. You walk in, you're like, what is this place? It's tremendous. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. Dollar PBRs, uh, great servers, bartenders, great vibe. Just an interesting group of people in there, all different walks of life. Great, great, great place. I personally think... Tuesday nights when I went there, it's the best bar in Charlotte. <laughs> Where is why did I just see this on my last night here? My last hours in this city. So Smoky Joe's Cafe, food and ambiance. I don't even know if they have food or not, but the ambiance is a five out of five. Incredible place. So cool. All the old signage on the wall. It's like a history lesson, uh, music stuff. Just killer. Five out of five on the ambiance. Cold beer, four out of five. Service, five out of five. TVs. Four out of five because they're, I think, too, with the TV system, it's based off what the bar is, too. So I think they, they had a couple TVs in there. That's all you need in that kind of place. You're lounging in like old dentist chairs and old um, barber chairs, and there's like couches everywhere. Like it's kind of a funky vibe, multiple pool tables, foosball tables. Like it is dive bar on steroids with unbelievable live music. So if you like that kind of stuff, it's for you. Smoky Joe's Cafe, 18 out of 20. Had to talk about it this week on the Colin Thompson show. Uh, Bus one members. I mean, this guy has just been ridiculous. I'm going to pull up the notes here because I've had it on my show last week, but Kirk Herb Street. I mean, he is an absolute beast. In four months, this is by Front Office Sports. In four months, Kirk Herb Street has worked 16 shows. 18 college football games for ESPN, 15 games for Amazon in 36 different cities. That doesn't include all the stuff he does during the week, all the shows he calls into. He's an absolute beast. He's a pro. People, Some people like him on, on um, doing the NFL games on Thursday with Al Michaels. I love it. Some people don't. Some people do. I love it. Some people like, oh, he's got a college voice. I, whatever. His his material's great. I think he adds a little bit of the college game to it. Talks about these players where they played a little bit more than a normal announcer. Um, I think it's a breath of fresh air. I think it's unique. I think he brings a great perspective. Al Michaels is the GOAT, and he's with Al. It's tremendous. So great stuff. Obviously, college game day, it, he, he's, the, he's the main piece in it. So like Kirk and McAfee and these guys that are just dominating. Uh, I got to give them their flowers because it, it's just really impressive to see. And they grind, 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 grind. So Kirk did a great job. He's going to enjoy the offseason. He's a guy I've seen at the Kentucky Derby before. He, he likes to have a good time and get after it and, and do a little work, do a little play. So big fan of Kirk. I know some people that know him well, too, on a personal level, and they love the guy. So he's a great guy, and I want to give him his flowers here on the Colin Thompson Show. Blaine Gabbert, another bus one member this week. We played in Tampa a couple weeks ago, and – I'm watching the news the night before the game, and 
all it says is Bucks player saves family from a helicopter crash. So Blaine, I saw the interview that he did. He was out on his wave runners with his family. They had a half day at the facility, family coming to town for the game. And he's driving his wave runners around. And while they're out there, they pull up on a helicopter that crashed into the water or a plane. And they jump in and save these people's lives. And then you go to the game in Tampa and Blaine and Tom Brady are warming up at, at, at halftime to start the third quarter and they're throwing the ball back and forth to each other. And they have the people that he saved up on the screen and the place is going crazy for playing. It was a really cool moment. So uh, good, good humanitarian award, Jack, pretty cool for, for Blaine and uh, his family and the family he saved. So great work, Blaine, great work. The medical response team at Tampa, you know, uh, PD and fire department, all that too. That's unbelievable. So Tampa is a great city. Uh, you know, the Bucs are in the playoffs. Fun. It was going to be fun to watch them go there. Have a good football club. Okay. Last but certainly not least, boss one member on this week, Joey McGuire, the head coach of a Texas Tech football. I've got to know Joey. Shout out to Jarrett. Uh, Garrett, excuse me, who made – who uh, is the wide receiver coach now uh, at Nebraska. He's a good buddy of mine, Garrett. Great dude. Great coach. And he's been with us in Carolina the last couple of years. He played at Baylor for Coach Rule. Coach brought him to Carolina. And now he's going to be the wideouts coach. Uh, for the Nebraska Hustlers. His dad is the head coach at Texas Tech. And they honored the late, great Mike Leach with a spread, all-out spread formation uh, to play in their bowl game. And I know it's a couple weeks ago, but we haven't done a show in a couple weeks. And again, I want to give them their flowers. Unbelievable job by Joey doing that, paying homage. They you know, For the team they played, they declined the penalty, and it just went back to normal down a distance. So uh, really cool stuff from Tech doing that in their bowl game, honoring the late, great Mike Leach. Looking forward to paying my respects to him. He's a couple watering hole and establishments in Key West. He's got pictures in and he's got names on his bar stool in and a couple of places he liked to go. So that's how we're going to kind of pay our respects in Key West to Mike Leach. We're going to do a little Mike Leach bar tour, places I've seen him down there, uh, interact with him down there a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to those places. Uh, maybe one of the days we're down there and you know have a couple beers and talk to some good Mike Leach stories. So, uh, Jackie, anything from you here as we wrap up? No, I think you pretty much covered on pretty much everything. We hit on a lot. We have covered a lot in this last hour and some change. We did, we did. And about to pop over and do a Sam Boner show for me here one in 15, five minutes. Uh, again, you guys, check out all our shows here, Not For Long Media. For those that don't know, we have multiple, multiple shows that cover everything from football to baseball to food to drinking to travel to whatever. We have a little bit of everything here. Military shows on the way. So, uh, yeah. We're very thankful here for all our sponsors at Not For Long Media for making this possible. Thankful for Jackie and our team here at Not For Long Media for making this thing possible. Uh, possible. Got NFL football this weekend, Wild Card Weekend, a great weekend in football. Awesome. So, again, that's Jack Connell. I'm Colin Thompson. Appreciate everybody's support here at Not For Long Media and the Colin Thompson Show.